Hello everyone, welcome back to another lesson. Uh, this is the very first lesson of Unit 3. Uh, unit 3 is Factors and Products. So it's all about multiplying uh, things together and then also finding out um, in some very tough situations what two things we need to multiply together to get that thing. That will come later. Um, we're going to start with something that's semi-familiar, I think. Um, factors uh, and multiples of whole numbers. So there's no decimals, there's no fractions, uh, it's just whole regular numbers. So we'll start with some definitions. Um, a factor is an integer that can be exactly divided into another integer. So for example, 1, 2, and 3 are all, uh, and 6 are all factors of 6. Um, you divide 6 by 6, you get 1. Uh, you get another whole number out. Um, a product is the number obtained when you multiply two numbers together. Uh, so 14 is the product of uh, 7 and 2. Uh, some numbers, though, can't uh, have anything that multiplies together to make them other than 1 and themselves. Uh, those are prime numbers. Uh, so any whole number that's divisible only by 1 and itself. So a number like 3, only 1 and 3 multiplied together uh, can make that. Um, a number like 4, you can multiply 2 and 2 together. So it is not a prime number. Um, 5, 7, 11, carrying on there. Um, what we can do is we can take any number and break it down into prime factors or prime numbers, numbers that cannot be um, factored anymore. And that's called prime factorization. And that's going to be the basis for what we're doing today. Uh, so what we do is we take um, all of the prime factors and we write them multiplied together to uh, express how we would get that number. So 24 can be expressed as 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. Uh, and I'll show you uh, how we get that. Um, 30 can have many different pairs, but it only has one uh, set of prime factors. So no matter how you do this, there's multiple ways you can do this, you should get the same answer every single time. So let's do this for the numbers 24 and 30. And throughout this lesson, you might need a little bit of scrap paper um, to do these trees on because uh, there's not a whole lot of room. And if you make a mistake, it can be, um, you know, you have to cross it all out and then there's not a whole lot of space. So let's do this. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to start with 24 at the top. And you know, I probably could have written it a little bit more into the inside because we're going to start making a tree that branches out. So it's okay because this is a fairly low number, but what two numbers would multiply together to make 24? I'm going to say 6 and 4. So I'm going to break down the number based on um, what we can multiply or some factors of it. So two things we can multiply together. Um, now we want to keep doing this for each of these numbers until we get to a place where um, the numbers are prime numbers and you can't break them down anymore except with one and themselves. So we can break four up into two and two and we can break six up into, well, three times two equals six. Now all of these numbers are prime uh, prime numbers. You can't break them down any further. So that means we could write um, 24 as a set of prime numbers by saying it's 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. And they always write them in order. That little dot means multiplied by. So that would be writing it um, as, a, as a prime factors. Um, we can do that for 30 as well. So there's multiple ways that you can do this. I'll do it twice here at the same time. I could break down 30 into 10 and 3. 3 is a prime number, so i got to just break down 10 now. 10 can break down into 5 and 2. That is the end. Or I could take 30 and I could break it down into 15 and 2. And then 2 is at a prime number. You can't break that down any further. And then 15 can be broken into 5 and 3. If you're to look at both of them, there's a single 2, there's a single 3, and a single 5 in both of these. So it doesn't matter how you do the problem, uh, it comes out to the same. So 30 would be written as 2 times 3 times 5. And we can check that. Uh, 2 times 3 is 6, 
times 5 equals 30. So writing it as a prime, a set of prime factors is always the same. Let's do 1050 next, a little bit higher. Whenever I see a zero, I always like to take it off in the form of a 10. So I would go 105 and 10. 10 is easy to break down. We did that earlier, to extend into 5 and 2. Um, well, let's see. For 105, if we divide 5 into it, I believe that would be 21. So 5 and 21, 5 is a prime factor. So I can just break down 21. Uh, what two numbers multiplied together to make 21? It would be 7 and 3. All of those values are prime factors. So I could write it, I'll write it over here. 1050 will be written as 2. There's only one two, there's one three, there are two fives, and there is one seven. So you could check that. If you were to multiply that out, you should get um, 1,050. So that's how we do a uh, prime factor tree, and we uh, write it as a set of prime factors. Uh, the next part is a try it on your own for two of them. So go ahead and give it a try, pause it here, and then come back and um, I will be doing the problem. Okay, let's get to it. Uh, we'll start with the number 72. 72, well, I know 72 is a, um, can, nine can divide into it, I don't know why. It's just one that I always remember. Uh, that one is 9 times 8, and you can always check this stuff in your calculator, uh, no problem. 72 is 9 times 8, and I know that 9 is 3 times 3 to get 9, that's all you can do. 8 can be broken down uh, into 1 and 8, which we don't do. We never go into 1 in the same number, because in your tree will just go down forever. So two numbers that, multi uh, that go into it are 2 and 4 and then four works down into two and two again. So then 72 can be written as two times two times three times three. You can do the same thing with 3,300. When there's two zeros on the end, I like to take 100 off. So I can divide 100 into here, 133. I can then break down 33 into 11 and 3. And 11 is actually a prime number. So that's as far as we can go. It might seem a little large, but that's a prime number. We can break down 100 into 10 and 10. You could do 50 and 2 if you wanted to. Um, whatever works for you. And then both of these can be broken down into 5 and 2. 5 times 2 equals 10. So 3,300 can be written as a set of prime factors. There is two twos. There is a single three, we've got two fives, and we have an 11. So just like that, um, we're written as a set of prime factors. So sometimes it takes a little bit of time, but um, you can always find the answer. It is always there. Uh, let's look at some different rules, some things that can help us out. So divisibility rules. A number is always divisible by two if it's even. You guys know that, like two, four, six, eight, 100, 10,000, anything that's even is divisible by two. Uh, a number is divisible by three if the sum of its digits is divisible by three. So if you take a number uh, and you add up those digits uh, and they're divisible by three, you can divide that number by three. Uh, so you, you would be able to punch that into your calculator and find out what other number uh, is a factor of it. Uh, the uh, number is divisible by 4 if the last two digits are divisible by 4. So any number, no matter how long it is, if the last two digits are divisible by 4, um, it can it, the whole thing is divisible by 4. Uh, if the last number is 20, 24, 28, 40, 44, anything with the last two digits divisible by four into a whole number, the entire number is divisible by four. Um, it's divisible by five if the last digit is zero or five, as you guys know, anything like 10 or 15 or 20. And six is a little bit of a harder one, um, but if both two and three work out, then it is divisible by six. Um, 
So it takes two rules for you to check, but if it's both divisible by two and by three, the entire thing is divisible by six. And sometimes when you can find a number that it's divisible by that's a little larger, it takes a little bit less time and a little bit less paper space uh, overall to do the problem. Uh, so I'll use these tricks every once in a while, but um, yeah, it's just something if you're stuck and there's a number that you have no idea how you can find a number that uh, goes into it, check out those. Uh, so the greatest common factor. There is a really easy method to find out the greatest common factor between two numbers. Uh, the greatest common factor um, that two or more numbers have in common. So uh, let's start with 12 and 16. So first thing we're going to do is make a factor tree for all of them. Why would we be doing this if um, I'll be learning how to do a factor tree if we weren't going to use them. So uh, 6 and 2, and then 3 and 2 for 6. So that is our prime factor tree for 12. And then for 16, I would go 4 times 4. And then all of these are broken into 2. So 2 times 2 equals 4. We just do that twice. So, um, you know, actually, there's one method that we can use when they're small numbers and we'll do that first but I'll show you uh, yeah we'll use this on the next page I promise okay I'll come back to it um, okay here we go so so method that we can use is we can just list the factors so if we've got 12 and 16 don't worry it'll all make sense uh, if we've got 12 and 16 um, the factors of 12 would be like 1 and 12 1 times 12 equals uh, 12. We could also do 2 and 6, right? 2 times 6. We could also do 3 times 4. So those are all the factors of 12. Do the same thing for 16. 1 and 16, uh, 2 and 8, oh, and then just 4 in the middle. So what we would do is we would work our way this way and see the greatest number that how they have in common. So 12 and 16, 8, 6, 4, and 4 they have in common. So the greatest common factor is 4. And I'll prove it to you using our method that I started earlier um, in a little bit. Uh, let's do the next one though. 24 and 32. Also small enough that we can probably just do them with a list. If we did 1 and 24, we could do 2 and 12. We could do four and six. Could we do three? Did I make a mistake? I think we could do three. Yes, we could do three and eight. Okay, so I gotta fit those in there. Um, four and six, and I believe that that is it then. 32, we could do one and 32, two and 16. We could do not three, we could do four and eight, we do six, no we can't do six, um, seven, no we can't. So we would go through here, we see the largest number that they have in common, it looks to me like eight would be that number. So the greatest common factor for those values would be eight. Uh, let's prove that, let's prove that here on this next part. This is the method that you're going to be using for most of it, um, the method of prime factorization. So it gets harder and harder as you get larger numbers. So this will help you uh, when the numbers are huge. So you write the number as a product of its prime factors, and the greatest common factor is the product of all the common factors. This will make sense right away. So we did the factor trees of 12 and 16. Let's write them out as uh, a set of uh, prime factors. So 12 is 2 times 2 times 3 and 16 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So what we will do to get the greatest common factor is we will take every number that they have in common and multiply it together. So they have this set of 2's in common. So we're going to take 2. They have this set of 2's in common so we're going to take that 2 and then that's it. They have no threes in common, no more twos in common. So that means that the greatest common factor is four. And that's what we found it out to be um, on the last page, greatest common factor of four. 
Um, we can do the same thing, I think, for the next set, which is 24 and 32, which I just showed you uh, we could do by a list. But a more reliable method is with um, a factor tree. So let's do it. Uh, we take 24 and we'll break it down into 12 and 2, 6 and 2, 3 and 2. So I'm just taking the number and I'm splitting it, dividing it by 2 until I get to a number that I can't do that to anymore uh, to get its prime factor tree. Let's do the same thing for 32. So 32 uh, divided by 2 is 16. 16 divided by 2 is 8. 8 divided by 2 is 4. And then 4 divided by 2 is 2 times 2. So uh, we now have the factor trees, and we can write that all out. So we've got 24 as a prime, set of prime factors is 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. 32 as a set of prime factors is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So what we're going to do is we're going to find all of the numbers that they have in common. Here, here, and here. And multiply them together. So that's 2 times 2 times 2 for 8 being the greatest common factor. And that is what we had um, with our list method. Um, going to do a few more that are a little bit tougher because they are larger numbers and you wouldn't be able to just list an entire set of their factors. So uh, the next ones we're going to do is 630 and 2100. So it might seem a little daunting, but we've got it. So 6300, let's do it. When I see a zero on the end, I'm going to take it and divide the 10 off. So I'm going to take 10 and then 63, right? You just take the zero off and you take the 10 out. So I know 10 is five and two, that's really easy. 63 can be broken into seven and nine. And then nine can be broken into three and three. So there are our prime factors. Uh, let's see, we can do 2100 as well. So whenever there's two zeros, I take 100 off. So I'm left with 21 and 100. 21 is seven times three. Those are the only two numbers that multiply together to get 21. Other than one in itself, and we never use those. And 100 can be broken into 10 and 10, which we know from previously is five and two multiplied together. So now we're at a set of prime factors. We can write them out now. So 630 has a two first, we have two threes, we have a five, and we have a seven. Cool. We then have 2100, which has one, two, twos. It's got a three. It's got two fives and it has a seven as well. Okay, so this is gonna be a little bit bigger. Let's uh, circle the ones that all ha they have in common. So there's a single two in the first one. So that means that that is all that's going to be paired up. We have a three that can get paired up, but just one three. Looks like we have a five that can get paired up, which is excellent. And then the sevens can get paired up. These extra numbers that I have encircled, um, they're just forgotten about. We can then take two times three times five times seven. Let's see if we can do that in our head. Uh, we've got two times three is six, times five is 30, and then three times seven is 21, so that means that um, 30 times seven would be 210 for a greatest common factor. You can check my math, uh, but I do believe it is 210. Uh, whenever you can do mental math, um, definitely do that. So you can see two numbers that you wouldn't be able to list all the factors for. Um, to get to 210, um, we can do using factor trees. Uh, let's do one more problem, and then there's a try it on your own, and then there is lots for you to try. Uh, definitely use some scrap paper when you're doing this because um, it's definitely common to make a mistake and have to restart the tree. So let's do this next one. We have three numbers that we need to do. So let's make three factor trees. We've got 60. 
I wrote it really close because I know that it's not going to be very many uh, trees long. I'm going to take 10 and 6 because I lop off the 0. 10 I know is 5 and 2. 6 is always 3 times 2. You get into a pattern where you see a number and you know what its prime factors are. Uh, and you can just do it real quick. Uh, let's see, we've got 96 next. A little bit of a tricky one. Uh, I know that 12 goes into 96. Um, I don't know why I know that, just do. Uh, so I know I can even just, if I don't remember what uh, to multiply to get there, I can just punch 12, 96 divided by 12 into my calculator and find out what it is. But I know that it's eight. 12 times eight is 96. I can break up eight into two and four, and then break up the four into a couple of twos. And then we can break up 12 into three and four and do the same thing for that four, break it up into a couple of twos. So we're at our set of prime factors. Uh, let's continue. We have 108 next. So 108 is simply 12 more than 96. So 12 times nine would get us that value. We can three times three for nine. It's always there. 12 is three times four, and four is broken up into a couple of twos. We can now write them all stacked up on top of each other, and then we have to make sure that each one has that number in it. So it has to be common to all three, not just two of them. So 60 is written as two times two times three times five. 96 is written to, there's one, two, three, four, five twos, I believe. Three, four, five, twos, and a three. Okay. And then 108 is one, two, twos, and three, threes. So quite a mix we have. Let's see. Let's put a circle around all the common numbers. I see a bunch of twos. That's nice and lined up. That's good. Got another set of twos, but that's it because then it goes into threes. So um, I go all the way to the three over here, and I see that there is one there. So there's one common between them. So I'm just going to circle that three to make it easier on myself. And then there's no five common to all of them, just in the one. So that means the greatest common factor is equal to two times two times three, which is four times three is 12. That is the greatest common factor. This is the largest number that can be divided into all of those uh, and create another whole number. Uh, there is one thing left to do. Try it on your own. So I want you to uh, find the greatest common factor of 126 and 144. So pause it here and then unpause it when you're done and we can work through it together. Okay, so let's do 126 and 144. 126, okay, this is a little bit of a tricky one. Um, let's see, I see that the, uh, if I add up the digits, it's divisible by three. So one plus two plus six equals nine. So adding them all up it equals nine and that's divisible by three. So this number is divisible by three. Let's write a three here. What number goes into there, like other than three, uh, I can punch 126 divided by three into my calculator, and it's 42. So three is a prime number, but 42 is not, so I can break that down further, and that's a whole lot more manageable. Um, six and seven multiply together to get 42, and then six is always three and two. So although it might look daunting, it's really not that many steps once you get going. Uh, let's see, we also do 144, and I know 144 is a perfect square, so 12 times 12 equals 144, so I can break that down into 3 and 4 twice, and then the 4 gets broken down into 2 times 2 each and every time. Uh, so now we can write them stacked up, 1, 2, 6 as a set of prime factors is 2 times 3 times 3 times 7. And 144 is a set of prime factors. I've got four twos and two threes. So I'm going to put a circle 
around the sets that we have in common. So we've got twos in common, and it looks like we've got one set of threes. Oh, we got two sets of threes in common. This is gonna be a funny one, but that's okay. So we've got two sets of threes in common, um, and one set, one two. So we've got greatest common factor is equal to two times three times three. 3 times 3 is 9 times 2 is 18. So 18 is our greatest common factor. So we can use the prime factorization trees to uh, find out what the greatest common factors, and we'll talk about a few um, different ways to use this uh, next time. Thanks for watching. Um, try the problems that are in your booklet, and hope to see you soon.